In my last video, I explained in plain English how the DMO platform works on the soon to be released BWATI Shark here in Australia. The comment section lit up with interest, so I thought, why not dive deeper? So today, we're gonna to take a more in-depth technical look at the mechanics of BYD's dual mode hybrid system. And how am I gonna show this to you? The best way I know how, with basic animated diagrams that look like I made them in Microsoft Paint. That are more on this episode of Beyond EV. Your home for everything BYD. Hi everyone, David here from Beyond EV and in this episode we're taking a technical deep dive into the mechanics of BYD's EHS transmission system. This system is the powerhouse behind distributing energy from both the battery and the engine to the wheels in BYD hybrid vehicles. But before we start, just a quick reminder, Beyond EV memberships are now live, starting at just $3 a month. So if you want to support the channel, click the join button below for more info. Also, the Beyond EV store is also open with shirts, mugs, stubby holders, just about everything you can think of that I could slap a logo on. And just about the store, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to a viewer in Texas who bought a Beyond EV t-shirt this week and left this kind message for the channel. It's actually amazing to me to think that someone in Texas is walking around in a Beyond EV t-shirt. I won't name names, but you know who you are, buddy. Your support is much appreciated. Thank you very much, mate. Now, let's take a closer look at how BYD's hybrid system actually works. The connection point between the engine and the electric drive motors is called the EHS transmission or electric hybrid system transmission. I should mention that the EHS transmission in both the DMO platform of the Shark and the DMI platform of the C-Line 6 are very similar. The main difference is the DMO platform on the Shark is mounted longitudinally, front to back down the chassis, while the DMI platform is mounted transversely, right to left across the chassis. There are similar systems made by other manufacturers, but BYD has mentioned that the DMO platform is actually the world's first longitudinally mounted EHS system of its kind. Now I'm going to pause the video here and give you a closer look at what we're actually going to look at. This coupling point here is where the electric motors and the engine meet up. This is the EHS transmission. This is the mechanical part of the drivetrain that is responsible for deciding what is powering the wheels, either electricity from the battery, petrol from the engine, or both. Now what I've done is put together a number of 2D diagrams of a cross section of this transmission and I'm going to show you the different flows of power and how they mechanically get to the wheels from both the engine and the battery in all the different modes that are available. I'm going to use the BYD Shark's DMO hybrid system for this example, but just know that this layout would also work for the BYD C-Line 6 DMI hybrid as well. So let's go through the different components. What you see here is essentially a layout of a BYD EHS transmission. If you were to decouple the engine from the electric motors, the layout of the gears inside that transmission are actually pretty close to what you're looking at here in both size scale and layout. It is made up of four main gears, which are used to power a differential that drives the axle. It was hard to illustrate the axle going through the differential in this diagram, so I just illustrated that connection with a black line connecting the differential and the axle. But just know, in real life, that axle would be going through that differential. At the top and bottom, you see the power inputs. 30 kilowatt hour LFP blade battery at the top and the 1.5 litre turbo engine at the bottom. The 1.5 litre turbo engine supplies power directly to the large brown cock. It is the largest gear in the transmission. There are no planetary gear sets and all the engine does is drive that one brown gear. This is what makes it a one speed transmission. In the upcoming diagrams, you will see the brown cog move when it's decoupled from the intermittent shaft. But just note, in the actual transmission, the brown cog is stationary and it doesn't move at all. The brown key is operated by clutch. When the clutch is engaged, it's decoupled from the driveline. But when it's released, it supplies power to the intermittent shaft. In my diagrams, I just move the engine gear away a little bit to the side, just to illustrate this clutch mechanism and how it works. There are two electric motors connected to this transmission, a P1 electric generator motor illustrated in red, and a P3 drive motor illustrated in blue. The P1 electric generator motor is driven by the big brown cog, which is powered by the engine. 
When driven, this generator generates electricity which is stored in the LFP blade battery. The P3 electric drive motor supplies power into the transmission directly from either the LFP blade battery or through power generated by the P1 electric generator motor in series mode. When driven, this is the motor that supplies power to the wheels. In between all these gears is a grey countershaft, but I believe BYD refers to this as an intermittent shaft. This is responsible for combining power from both the engine and the electric drive motor when in hybrid mode. This transmission is able to power the wheels four different ways, or in four different modes, and I'm going to show you an animated diagram of each mode to illustrate how power is distributed in each mode. The first mode is EV mode. In this mode, the engine is decoupled from the intermittent shaft and 100% of the power is provided by the P3 electric drive motor, which supplies power directly from the battery. This is the default state of operation for BYD's DM platforms and is used in all situations provided you have at least 20% battery state of charge. The second mode is fuel mode. Now this mode might actually be programmed out of most vehicles, but it is mechanically possible on the DM drivetrain. In this mode, both the P1 generator motor and P3 drive motor are decoupled from the driveline and the petrol engine supplies 100% of the power to the axle through the intermittent shaft. Like I said, it is mechanically possible, but this mode will most likely be programmed out of most vehicles so you will never actually use it. Not that you'd really want to anyway, because it would be like driving around in fourth gear all the time in a car that's capable of being driven by an electric motor. The third mode is series mode. In this mode, the petrol engine is decoupled from the intermittent shaft but operates to power the P1 electric generator motor, which then generates electricity to supply charge to the battery as well as power the electric drive motor. This is the power generation mode of the DM platform. The car will feel like you were driving an EV, but the range of the battery will be extended by the petrol engine constantly supplying charge to the battery. This mode is used when you've hit your predetermined save state, which by default is 20%. This is also the mode the car shifts to when driving over 70 kilometers an hour. The fourth mode is parallel mode. In this mode, the petrol engine is decoupled from the P1 electric generator motor and supplies supplementing power to the counter shaft, which is primarily driven by the electric drive motor. In this mode, both the electric drive motor and the petrol engine both provide power directly to the wheels at the same time, parallel to each other. This situation is used in high acceleration situations. The P3 drive motor will be the primary driver of the counter shaft, but the use of the petrol engine will help ease resistance of the counter shaft against the drive motor, therefore providing faster acceleration. So there you have it. A mechanical look at how BYD's dual mode hybrid system works from a technical perspective. While other hybrid systems operate in a similar fashion, most are limited to maybe two or possibly three of these modes. As far as I'm aware, BYD is the first to introduce all four separate modes as a capability through the one hybrid system. But I could be wrong. If you know a bit more about some of these other systems that are similar, let me know down in the comments. I'm always keen to expand my knowledge and everyone's input is always appreciated. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. We've got plenty more BYD related content headed your way. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.